Okay. Hello, my name is John Crawford. I'm Lieutenant Governor of Division 21, San Diego, and I'm here today with our candidate for Governor-elect, Dan Germain. Dan? Thank you, John. Uh, I, uh, I am a candidate for, for Governor-elect in the uh, Calneva District, and uh, I look forward to uh, sharing a few of my thoughts today in response to some questions that I understand you have. Uh, and Dan, you and I have something in common. That's uh, we are both past presidents of the San Diego State University Circle K Club, and uh, maybe a little bit more. That's we true. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we definitely have some connections through the years. Yeah. Uh, but I wanted to start with uh, something that I, I actually don't know about you, Dan, and that's what made you join Circle K in the first place all those years ago. Well, I I remember it like it was. 40 years ago, uh, first stepping foot on the campus of San Diego State University, having transferred there after my uh, fishing, uh, my two year college experience. And I was drawn to San Diego for uh, what I understood to be a, uh, a, a good quality. Uh, telecommunications or broadcast journalism school True. and uh, <clears throat> but I didn't know a soul you know I, I went to San Diego and uh, had no contacts whatsoever and um, I managed to find myself wandering around uh, <clears throat> the campus on the day when all of the student organizations had their information uh, tables out and their canopies and their signage and their banners and uh, I don't remember how many I stopped and talked to but uh, I was most impressed with a, a blue and gold felt banner uh, that has we all now know is the Kiwanis family banner and, and uh, in talking with the Circle K membership what I heard from them uh, at the time was uh, a group of people who valued community service and also offered an opportunity for leadership development which is important to most college students so uh, I joined. And of course that uh, San Diego State Circle K Club has been sponsored for the last 50 years plus uh, by my Kiwanis Club, the Grandfield Island Gardens Kiwanis Club. And uh, we have a member by the name of Jack Scott. Uh, would you please introduce us to Jack Scott and tell us uh, what he meant to you then as well as now? It's, uh, I appreciate any opportunity uh, I am ever given to talk about Jack. In addition to beginning to develop friendships, uh, with other of my peers, my age group peers, um, I met Jack, who at the time was the Kiwanis advisor to San Diego State Circle K, and um, it didn't take long for me to see how much he he was paying attention to uh, my initial time in Circle K and watching me interact with people and and uh, the, the second year I was there I served as president of the club and it was kind of that transition period where I really began to hear from him how much uh, potential that he saw in me and I, I took that to mean more than anything here's a Here's a guy uh, a generation or better away from me, uh, older than me, uh, who um, believed in me. And it certainly is a, a phase of life where we're, we all seek uh, and benefit from people who believe in you. And um, so, I had other opportunities in Circle K over the years, even after I left Kiwanis, uh, but Jack uh, 
was one of those members of Kiwanis who, uh, w it was important to him to maintain our relationship and our contact. And uh, even though my Circle K career ended up in Sacramento, uh, there was never a day that I wasn't, I didn't feel Jack's support and friendship. And I just, uh, I just spent a good half hour or so uh, sitting with uh, some brand new Kiwanians who are not long out of Circle K in, in Sacramento. And I talked to them at length about Jack and what he meant to me. And I shared with them a story of uh, just how beyond, how far beyond that our Kiwanis, our shared Kiwanis experience, that our relationship uh, moved uh, to the point where he he became part of my family family, uh, and he he became very close to both my parents and my grandparents. There was uh, more than one occasion where he got in his car and from San Diego and drove up the Central Valley, and he got to Sacramento, he completely bypassed where I lived, went up to El Dorado County to spend a week with my parents and my grandparents. Wow. And uh, so that, that gives you a sense of That's the what he has always meant to me. That's the Jack Scott that I know. Jack. Um, for those who haven't met him, Jack is 97 years old. He is a World War II veteran. Uh, he joined our club for the first time in 1969. And he's been in and out over the years, but you're not the first person that I've heard this from, mm -hmm. how Jack has become a living, a living legend among those of us who were in San Diego State University Circle K. And uh, for those who were there in the 70s and the 80s, he, I still hear about people um, Keeping in touch with Jack, and when I go to conferences, that's the first thing they ask, how's Jack? Mm. Uh, he, and we're lucky to have him. He's, he's still living with him. We are all lucky to have him. Uh, and uh, just one of the little quirky things uh, uh, about our friendship, he he and I are 30 years apart. He was, he was born in 1924, and I was born in 1954. And so it's always been pretty easy for me to keep track of how old that guy was. Uh, and uh, I believe him when he says he's going to live to 108. <laughs> I honestly, he can be he can be cranky and ornery and uh, gruff. Uh, and if you don't mind me taking just another minute or two to talk about him, uh, he's one of those guys and asks. You know, because you know him, and and he's he, you're close to him as well. Um, he he doesn't filter much of what he thinks and what he says, and that can be both good and bad. But uh, if you know him well enough, you realize that it's all coming from a good place, and if he is harsh with you, if he is direct and critical of you, it's because he wants to he wants to help you. That's true. He's very sincere. He he, he is a tremendous boy and he really does want what's best for our, our youth. Um, and sometimes he can come across as, as rough, but uh, I think that adds to his charm. <laughs> charm. I've never heard anyone use the word charm with Jack, but uh, Anyway, I, I agree. I, I have my own Jack Scott story, and this is from uh, more than 20 years ago when I ran for governor of Circle K. And I don't remember if the convention was in Woodland Hills or in Ontario, but coming from San Diego, it was still a long way from home. Huh. And I was a nervous wreck that morning because here I was, it was a contested race, and I knew it was going to be close, and I had to give the speech of my life, and if I was going to win, I had to, you know, suck it up and get confident. And I get up there in the front of the room, get ready to make my, my speech. And in the back of the room, I see Jack Scott in the doorway. And Jack had driven up without even telling me. He drove up from San Diego to wherever we were, over 100 miles, over two hours away. 
And he drove up that morning just to see me give my speech. And seeing him in the back of the room, that gave me that instant boost of confidence that I needed. Um, and, and it was just really super supportive. And I know he would do that not just for me, but for so many of the Circle Kers over the years. Uh, which leads me to my next question. How can Kiwanis clubs make that same emotional connection with their SLP leaders of today? Well, it, it's... Um there is a magic formula there somewhere. I, did, I just don't know if anybody understands it completely. Uh, because I think we have shared a sense of why Jack and others like him and Kiwanis have been important to us to the point where um, we don't give a second thought to wanting to pay it forward and be the same for young people that we now have an opportunity to influence the way that that he influenced us and uh, so I, I mentioned the, the group of new Kiwanians that I just spent some time with uh, who uh, <coughs> we formerly had that relationship where uh, Rita and I have been longtime advisors to Sac State Circle K, and we have watched these young people develop in that context, and now they're fellow Kiwanians. And they talk about the Kiwanians that have influenced them in the way that you and I have been talking. Somehow, some way, that spirit and that magic relationships gets passed from generation to generation and I think is going to be, going to continue to be, uh, I think we're going to observe it for many years to come between generations. As a, as a key club advisor myself, one of the most frustrating things is when I'm talking to a group of key clubbers or talking to a group of students, and I ask them, well, who is your sponsoring Kiwanis Club? And they don't know. Or who is your sponsoring Kiwanis Advisor? And they don't know. And that tells me that there is no connection. They're not making that same emotional connection that you and I had, which is why we are in Kiwanis today. And work as hard as we do. Yes, that's I true. <laughs> Well, my, my last question for you here, Dan, um, as potentially our next district governor, what is the most important piece of advice that you would give to a brand new SLP advisor? Whether it's Key Club or Circle K or Builders Club, brand new advisor, what would you tell them? It is no more complicated than this. Be there. Be there. Um, you don't, if you are there for uh, the majority of what these young people experience in Circle K and uh, therefore they, they see it as a shared experience with you, um, you don't even necessarily have to intervene or um, work hard to influence how they do what they do, uh, just the fact that you're there. You just talked about uh, members of our service leadership programs who have no idea who their advisors are. Um, and that's because the advisors aren't there. And so, there are lots of other things that you can add to the conversation, but just being there is the single most important thing. I agree. I agree. Well, thank you very much for sharing your time and your thoughts with us. Yeah, thank it's you. It's been man. a pleasure. It, it has been, and will continue to be.